Hey guys, Max Selfie Queen here, and welcome to Finding Paradise. So, if you will remember, or if you've been around for a while, you know that we played through a little game called To the Moon, and I really enjoyed that game. I really enjoyed just the little simplicity of it and just the easiness, pretty much, of the game. Well, in some points. So I thought we would play through another Freebird game because I really love their, just their games in general. All these point and click style games are really interesting to me. I really enjoy them. So I figured today we would start by playing through another one. And I mean, why not do Finding Paradise? I mean, it just seems only natural uh, that we do Finding Paradise next, because that is another one of the games that they have created, and I believe it's the second one in the series. Um, I think it still continues on from where they left off into the moon. So it should be pretty interesting. I want to go ahead and get into this and just get started, because with me, you never know, because yeah, the games are pretty simple, but the puzzles are kind of, are kind of annoying sometimes to me, because I'm terrible at puzzles, okay? I'm terrible at puzzles. Like, <laughs> I try so hard, but I'm just not good at the puzzles. Um, so hopefully I won't struggle too much on these puzzles. Hopefully they'll be a little bit more easy than To the Moon, but <laughs> they're probably going to be more difficult knowing me. Uh, but I just, I have so many games on the channel that are like, you know, supposed to be games that are just calming and just calm down games and like super just a little get oh no speaking of this is not gonna go well no don't hit the squirrel oh no oh 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 my gosh you almost hit the squirrel oh thank goodness they didn't hit the squirrel <laughs> um but i have so many like calm down games on the channel that i just that are supposed to be calm down games but <laughs> they're not so I'm hoping that this one will be more of that. Uh, but here we are with Dr. Neil Watts and Dr. Ava. I forgot her last name, but the Ava say. What the? Ava! Ava Rosaline. That's how you keep everyone alive, including the squirrel. Hope you learned, hope you learned something. I thought there was another button that I could push to like go through this without having to click every time. Uh, look, sometimes it's either us or them. By keeping ourselves alive now, we can be around to stop more self-inflicted critter casualties later. Logic. Enlightening. We should be arriving at the pa patient soon. I could use a snack before then. Uh, do you mind? Wow, <laughs> only you would pack the glove box full of apples. Yeah, well, my nephew decorates the Christmas tree with them every year. And then I have to eat them for ages. Apples on a Christmas tree, huh? Don't you dare say it. Don't you mean pineapples? Ugh, French. That was not good, Watts. That was not good. I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> terrible joke, Watts. Terrible joke. So we're arriving at a new patient's house. As you, If you'll remember from the last game, we had an old man that was one of our patients, and his dream was to go to the moon. So now we need to, I guess, go see the next patient and see what their last wish and last dream is that they've always wanted to complete. Whoa, check out this rad bike. Why can't we go to work on these instead? Uh, because we are here to visit dead people, not to get ourselves killed. Really? I couldn't tell after the trauma of you driving like a stunt double. Besides, we're visiting half dead people. Very different things. Yeah, well, let's hurry and keep it that way. All yours. All right, so they're gonna tell us how to play the game, of course. Um, and I'm gonna need to probably scoot my keyboard over a bit because 
I think this game uses a lot of the mouse or a lot of the keyboard stuff. So I won't need to use my mouse too much. I think. I don't know. I don't remember all of the buttons, but I know it uses uh, the... You can use the mouse to actually click where you want to go as well, I think. Alright, let's roll. <sighs> like a cucumber. What? You know, cucumber rolls. Sushi. Yeah, uh, no. That's quite a stretch. Okay, your joke was cringe, but then you can say Rosaline's joke is not cringe? Come on. I mean, your joke was really cringe and bad, but you can't- you, you really can't say nothing about hers. Come on. What? Come on. What am I even saying at this point? <laughs> I'm making no sense. Hmm, there's a leaking sprinkler over there. Hey now, what happened here? See? He kicked my teddy into the water! Uh oh. I actually- yeah, I can see it there. Yeah, well, it's a dumb bear. Just like you're lame here. Who looks like that? But... Ma said my bun- bun-buns are pretty. <laughs> yeah, well she also named you. Okay, rude. Uh, don't worry, we'll get your bear back. Uh, actually, let me take care of this. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm telling you, I got this one. Uh, alright, let's see what Watts has got. Hey. Uh, what? Huh, is that also hers? Uh, no, that's mine, you doofus. It's the new Rebel Doll X3000. They're cool, because they got altitude. They got attitude and don't care. Unlike wimpy teddy bears, they... Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Neil, what the jalapeno did you do? What? What do you mean, what? You just took some kid's doll and kicked it into the water. You could get sued for- Yay! You're my hero! <laughs> no probs, kid. In your face! Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is happening right now? This is so messed up. I mean, yeah, it really is messed up. <laughs> Justice is cold and damp, Eva. Kinda like a tuna. Oh my god. <laughs> the jokes. I can't with the jokes. I can't. <laughs> oh, I feel like we should have had Rosaline do that one. <laughs> Instead of Watts, but honestly that was hilarious. I'll take it. Where are we supposed to be going anyway? Into the building? I guess we're supposed to be going into the building. That's, that's usually the way it goes with me when I play these games though. I get completely lost and I have no idea where to go and what to do. <laughs> Oh. Hello. Uh, hey there. This is Dr. Rosaline and Dr. Watts from Sigmund. You're actually here. Yeah, I hope we're on time. Um, are you letting us in? I'll wait outside the door for you. <laughs> what was that? What was what? Did you not feel the blast of ice through the monitor? Well, if she's the patient's spouse, then she's got a dying spouse. It's not like we're here to lay out a picnic. Good point, Neil. Good point. Alright, maybe it's just me. Okay, and maybe it is just you. Maybe it is. Hello? Wait, come back. I want to talk to you. Or not. I guess I won't talk to you. <laughs> oh, they were putting a box up. Okay, now we can talk to you. Here to fulfill someone's dying wish, huh? Um, how did you know? 
This is the second time I've seen a visit from your company this week. Uh, who is it this time? Um, Colin Reeves. Know of him? The retired pilot. <laughs> yeah. He lives on the top floor. Go on and give him the happy ending he deserves. Probably. Why is everyone in this place really mean? <laughs> like, I think Rosaline has a point there. They're all kind of being a little rude. Can we go up? Oh, we have to we have to actually push the elevator button, I guess. Nice. I'm gonna try not to make these episodes too long, but they're probably gonna end up being long. <laughs> Houses, am I right? Huh? Always make the job so cumbersome. Depends on the person. Obviously, I'm loving the game so far. <laughs> the jokes are hilarious to me. Dr. Rosaline, is it? Uh, and Dr. Watts, ahem. Yes, we're here for Colin. Of course. Thank you both for coming. Right this way. Uh, okay. Sure, we'll go right in, I guess. <laughs> He seems a little bit upset, but you know what? We're going to give her a pass because, yeah, if that is her dying spouse, then, you know, it's understandable. All right, Act 1. Tell me, what do you want to change? So we're in the first act of the game. Here we go. We're kind of getting into it now. Very exciting. I don't actually re remember the last time I saw this game being played. I haven't played through it myself, but I don't remember the last time I saw it being played, so... I'm probably not going to remember any of the story, which would be great. Uh-huh. This is a quaint place you got here. Uh, Colin's in the other room. Come with me. Uh, right down to business. I like that. Do you actually? <laughs> yeah, because right now I just really need to put this box down. Alright. Guess we will follow her. Right this way. And he should be up here, correct? Yes, there he is. In the bedroom. Uh, you must be here for my father. Oh, should we walk forward? Oh, okay. I didn't know. You're the patient's son. Yeah, uh, I came as soon as I heard. But we can talk later. Why don't you get set up first? That box looks heavy. See? He gets it. Alright, fine. Where's the medical doctor? Mm, she's here. Just went to the, to the washroom. Uh, is that table over there enough to set up? Uh, yeah, that'll do. Okay, I think we're supposed to... Okay. Oh, this table. Okay, I was like, what table are you talking about? Are you guys ready to get settled? Um, I mean, they're telling us we can look around more, but I think we'll go ahead and set the machine down. I mean, I just want to see, get like, get into the, um, into the beginning chapters of the game, and then we can look around more a little bit. Yeah, just give us a moment. We're kind of getting the introduction into the story anyway, so I don't want to take myself out of the story right now. <clears throat> All right, we are setting up our machine and everything that we need to get ready to, I believe we're going into his dreams. I don't remember how it works. Uh, is the power here sufficient? Why does everyone keep asking that? It'll work fine, sheesh. But first, brace yourselves for a power outage of cinematic proportion. Also, I'm gonna like, like I'm not good at doing any type of voices or anything, so I'm going to try my best to kind of make them sound a little bit different to each other, but they're probably all going to end up sounding the same. Huh. I guess you got a more stable power grid than our headquarters. That's equally, equally comforting as it is worrisome. Uh, you're in good hands. We do this all the time. <laughs> Too much of the time, if you ask me. So, uh, you two are for real. Um, what do you mean? 
you can really fulfill his wish. Uh, well, we'll certainly try our best, ma'am. But we always succeed, <laughs> because it would only be in his head, though. Not like he'd be able to tell the difference. Anyhow, that's up. What is it that he wants? Uh, he wouldn't tell us. He said it doesn't affect us and we have nothing to worry about. Uh, well, that sounds legit. Uh, look, that's, uh, that's okay. We'll find out from him soon enough. Isn't it also in the paperwork? Uh, yeah, but who reads that stuff, am I right? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But seriously, where did the file go? Uh, it wasn't in the box? Nope. Guess I might have left it in the car. Alright, I guess we got time while the machine's booting up anyway. Okay, so I know that if you have Dr. Watts go... I do remember this part. I think if you have Dr. Watts go fetch the file. Um, he has like a head pain or he has some type of pain and he he's, talks about his um, pills or something that he's taking. Um, but I want to do Rosaline because we picked Watts for the first part so I want to pick her and kind of switch off. Well someone's got to go get it and that someone could be you. But you're the one who forgot it. Exactly. Do you want me to go back there and forget it again? All right, so we'll just have Rosaline go. Uh, it'll be fine. I've updated the system. It's practically configuring itself now. Cool. That'll save some time. Uh, already done to business, huh? Oh, okay, so I guess if you choose Rosaline, then you don't even have to go. It just goes for you. Because I feel like if you chose him, there would be a cutscene or there would be something that you would have to do. Uh, but I don't, I don't quite remember, so, you know, don't quote me on that, but I think that's how it goes. Because there is a story between Rosaline and Watts as well. It's kind of like a story inside of the story, like your main goal is to fulfill this guy's wish. But the story kind of is between the scientists as well, because Watts is struggling with something that we find out a little bit about in towards the end of the last game. And it's all supposed to connect together, basically. Hey, I recognize you. Yeah, it's been a while. Although, weren't Dr. Winters and Dr. Lin assigned to this patient instead? Uh, yeah, but they had a full roster at the time, so we took over. Saved their butts. Uh, ironically, turned out they got nothing to do today. Hmm, I guess you never know the timing with the nature of your job. Anyhow, don't mind me, I'm just gonna go check on the patient. <clears throat> okay, you check on the patient. Okay, so do I need to actually go? I guess I do have to go. Try to leave him be. Disturbances only make my job harder. Okay, so I... I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> huh, something looks different about it. New paint. Thanks for noticing. That's how you spend your weekends? Hey, someone's gonna keep it looking pretty. Uh, by the way, you should knock on the neighbor's door on the way out. Uh, why? If I remember right, someone from that address just sig signed up with Sigmund last week. Uh, and since we're treating like angels of death and all... Since we're treated like angels of death and all, it could be a fun prank. Hey, just come and get the patient monitor before you go. Uh, okay. Weird. Here, this should help. All right, so we have a remote patient monitor. Colin's heart rate monitor is now activated. Press ESC or right-click to open the menu. Excellent. Now him having a heart attack would probably give me one too. Okay, so we can see... Yes, there's his heart rate there. No notes. We just have the item there. Okay. So I guess now we have to go to... Get that thing out of the car? I'm guessing that's what we're doing. Because we picked Rosaline. I thought it did it for us automatically, but I guess it didn't. Uh, also, he said to check the neighbor next door. 
I don't know if I want to do that or not. <clears throat> but we can go knock on the door. Press Q or mouse click to switch between characters. Oh, okay. So we can switch back here to him. <clears throat> well, it's entered automated configuration mode. It does that now? Yep, my handiwork with the sole purpose of setting myself free to play hooky. But instead, I gotta go gather background info on the patient. Well, I'll go keep an eye on the patient. That's how you get a lazy eye. Keep both eyes on him, please. Alright, we're gonna switch back to her. Okay, so... He said knock on the door. I mean... I guess we can knock on the door. There's... Oh. Oh, uh, you're from Sigcorp? Uh, am I really dead? Uh, no. Don't lie to me. I just signed up for your services last week. They said you'd come for me when it's time. I already told you, we're not here for you. No, I, I, I'm not prepared. I can't die yet. Oh, oh, I know. You're not really here. I'm just saying things. I just drink too much. Tra la 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 la. Okay, I guess it was a pretty good prank. Alright, let's go down to the car though. I guess we need to go and get that um, thing that they were talking about that we needed. But yeah, I'm pretty sure if you choose Watts, then something else will happen. Oh, it looks like she got her teddy bear back. Hey, you got your bear back. <laughs> yep, a nice lady in a brown dress swooped into the pond and got it for me. Whooped? Yeah, she didn't even touch the water. Right. Please tell your parents to watch your sugar intake. <laughs> Hilarious. Alright, some lady in a brown dress swooped into the water and got her bear out for her. Nice. I mean, I guess if we would have chose Rosaline, then she would have just got it out for her. But <laughs> we chose Watts, so we had to make two little girls cry instead of one. Well, one was already crying, but the other one, the other one wasn't, and we just made the person cry. There's someone sitting on the bench there. Um, I guess we'll just go do what we're supposed to. I believe right now the only goal that we have is to go to the car and get out to what was left behind. That what's left in the car. I think that's yeah I guess we're doing the right what we're supposed to because the cutscenes are working so the file isn't in the car either that doofus must have left it in the office Eva Hey, Roxy, still at the office? Yep, just waiting on the elevator. Not that you'd understand, would it opening instantly for you every time? What? That's a myth. I wait for elevators too. Yeah, when was the last time it did open instantly? Uh, see? You're either freakishly lucky or... Okay, okay, for pumpkin's sake. Look, Neil forgot the patient's file. Could you help us out? Okie dokie, pocky locky. Just give me a moment. Mission accomplished. Neil, the file wasn't in the car. Ah, I forgot it at the office, didn't I? It's fine. I called Roxanne. She's going to find it and send over a scan. Oh. Well, my office is locked, but she should check the printer in the lobby. Yep, she's on it. I'm heading back soon. Because I wonder what would happen if we switched over to him right now. Did you find it, Rox? Uh, yep, it was just sitting on Neil's table. Cool beans. Just scan it in and... Wait, Neil's table? You're inside Neil's office? Uh, yep, you asked me to get the files, right? Yeah, but Neil said he had his door locked. Oh, a girl's got her ways. Elaborate. Elaborate. Elaborate? 
I think she said elaborate, not elaborate, elaborate. Not like that, silly. I just hacked his electronic lock like a slice of cheese. Oh, okay. Well, uh, just get out of there and send me a scan, would you? Yep, yep, on it. What is going on? She's looking at something. What is she looking at? Yeah, guys, got everything else you need. Yep, Neil's setting up the machine right now. How's the weather out there? Huh? Is it nice out for a drive? It's not bad. <laughs> Neato! I think I'll just come over and get you the file in person then. Um, why? Just scan it and send it over. It saves us the time. Saves time for us both. Well, we've got no patience today, and it's boring here anyway. Anyhow, don't worry, I'll get there before you guys are done. See you both then! Okay, Roxy, have a safe drive. What an oddball, that Roxanne. <laughs> yeah, she does seem like a little bit of an oddball. <laughs> All right, so we're back in here with Neil now, and I think we can control Neil. Yes, we can. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and end off the first episode there. So we got quite a bit done. I mean, we got an intro into the story, of course. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and save, actually. I want to save in, yeah, save in file one, and that way we can load. All right. Yes, we are good to go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end up that episode there. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of Finding Paradise. Um, I'm really getting into it so far. I mean, we just started, but I already enjoy it just as much as To the Moon. And I think they had fixed a couple of things from the last game. So it should be a little bit more enjoyable play through and play style than last game. So this should be fun. So I'm going to go ahead and end up the episode here. And, um, of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed, and, um, I guess that's it. No more rambling for me, so I will see you in the next one.